Oh, look at that push rod. Holy Told shit. you it was going to be bent like a... Yesterday we robbed a coil wire from my Red GS. I know I don't have another coil wire, so I don't know if this is going to start. I'm going to have to see if we can rig something up. Edit, edit. There was no coil wire put back on it, so I cleaned up the old one. Hopefully it's got enough spark. Maybe it doesn't. Cold start with coil wire. So when I first started recording this part of the video, I intended to do a detailed video and then post an additional driving video. We decided to put them both together, had really good results with the foam cannon as you can see here coming up. Okay, fresh wash in the books. Still a lot of work to do. I gotta do this top better when time permits. There's still some spotting and dust work it's not quite as nice as i thought it was but nevertheless for 30 some years old almost 40. no other major surprises don't love that didn't notice that you could see where the quarter meets the filler panel it's starting to pop out here that side is much worse, but to be expected. And again, the car was smacked. It's not perfect to begin with. So happy with the results. Did a test spot in the interior to give you an idea of what's to come. That was just literally rubbing with the towel. This will be probably a more dramatic transformation. I have a horn button for it. I have a new shift lever. It's not all corroded and faded out. So you'll see that all here soon. Also for the aftermarket radio here with those weird speakers, we got these home boom booms. Not sure how they'll close with that in there. We'll find out. Going through and cleaning out the interior here was interesting. Found anything from an old pill bottle dated in 1987 to parts left over from the accident. And then my favorite find, pencil. Live nude shows, $10 off. Wonder if this is still good. Okay. Good first step. Carpet's actually gonna have to be replaced. I thought we might be able to save it, but it's not the best. Uh, also not the worst. I still think I might go over it once with the shampoo stuff. These are going to have to be re-dyed. Super easy to do. I actually have to do that for the horn button as well. So we'll do that all at once. 
Now we're gonna work on the seats. Uh, hopefully we can bring them back to as close to original. This is probably your best example. So I'm gonna spray them down with the D-germ and then um, I guess use the bristle brush on the drill slowly. Cause again, these are in really nice shape. Like a lot of times this vinyl's hard and ready to crack. So really happy with the seat. I mean, it shows the, the 62,000 miles right there, I think. I don't know why they stored it with the windows down in the barn. Doesn't make much sense, but here we are. This time lapse is about 30 minutes in total, vacuuming out and then spraying down the front and rear seats with a number of different degreasers and cleaners. There was no real perfect recipe, although watching this back did seem pretty dramatic from a results standpoint. So gonna have to do the interior again or figure out a way to dye the seat or something because they are in good shape. Found another key under the back seat. Let's clean it up, see if it works. Can barely fit in with the seat all the way up. It works. We use the original punch out there. That's not annoying. Top half of the rear seat. That's a big mouse house. We're looking much better. Still have to do the dash. I'm gonna use my Bissell Spot Pro Cleaner. Clean out this carpet as best as we could. Got a really solid floor here. I mean, that's hard to beat. So, might rip out the speaker wiring too. Now while we're here, figure that out at a later date. We're gonna take the seatbelts out and start soaking them because they are filthy, filthy gross. That's not rust. That is grime buildup. Okay, last time you would have saw it, we did the interior. It was earlier this week. Overall, it's held up pretty well. Not a lot has returned. Today, we're gonna focus on buffing out what's left of this paint to get a really good idea of how much shine and what it'll look like, theoretically, when the front end is repainted. So, I did buff. It's probably hard to see in the video did buff from like there over and I clay barred it all this staining came back so not quite sure how that's going to play itself out also did the bumper I have to uh still polish it of course but we did take a lot of that rust out uh, there is still some there from just quad zero steel wool I even did this uh, trash can that Joe Matievich gave us so thanks Joe Top is held up well. I'm gonna cover that with just some drop cloth so the compound is getting all in the material. Maybe we'll even do the front fenders just for fun. So that's what you're gonna see next. And we'll see how it looks outside, I think. So the first part here is cleaning the rear bumper with a quad zero steel wool pad and I think just simple green and hot water. Then moved on to cutting the trunk lid quarter door on the right side and i also did the left side but for some reason that video got corrupted but again you've seen this done a thousand times it's 5800 rpm on a da buffer with a cutting pad from mcguire's and a compound that's all that's been done so far no polish or wax my favorite part of detailing this car was buffing out the rear bumper using a foam pad on a drill and chemical guys metal polish so there you have it not perfect but it came out really good glass is in really nice shape body is decent it's got some nicks and dents in right here bumper came out really good for what it is it's running good it's certainly not a show car by any means, but it should be good enough. I have one more thing to do that I'll show you in a second, and then we'll talk to you about next steps. I'm going to get it back in before it leaves me stranded. My favorite part is not the starter. Oh my gosh, if it leaves me stranded here. 
is that. It starts right up. It idles. Accelerates decent too. Want to get it more on this side of the garage. I promise, I promise we're working on the 38. Just did the master cylinder rebuild. That will be in an upcoming video. Had to hone it. So this is the hone kit still out. So see, this car has been put to shelf status. We're not touching it. Or at least I said we weren't gonna touch it in the last video, the detail video that you probably just would have saw. However, here we are yet again, more new parts. We're gonna try and get this car on the road tomorrow we're gonna swap a front clip on it that we have all in primer nothing's gonna be perfect we got a front bumper for it we got a grill for it figured might as well let's get it all together see how it runs see how it drives see how it looks see what we have to reevaluate for when we actually paint the front clip but we're just gonna send it we're going full in we got a fan trap we got everything but what we don't have is great brakes so bought a bunch of new parts here we got rotors we got shoes we got brake pads we got wheel cylinders hoses what are these calipers master cylinder we're not going to use all of it for two reasons one the front rotors aren't actually that bad and to save time because i don't know if we have wheel bearings just use reuse the original rotors for now put the calipers on it the hoses and the pads the master cylinder and then in the rear Assuming that these wheel cylinders won't leak, because again, there is some break in this car already, we're just going to try and leave it as is completely uh, for two reasons. The first being not sure how much time we're going to have tomorrow doing the whole front clip, even though it should just be pretty much bolt on and go. It's not like we're perfectly adjusting fenders or anything. And the second, this isn't the rear that we'll be using for the car. It is not original to the car. It is a 256 open. We want to get a 308 posi in there, which is what... It would have had originally we could always rebuild this rear end and get a new carrier and stuff but it's probably just gonna be easier to source a complete rear so stay tuned i'm gonna do the front brakes off camera i'll bring you in when i get the wheel out and then i'll bring you in after we get it all back together we'll bleed it tomorrow and then we'll start swapping the front clip on and we'll go from there all right got the wheel off Rotors are a little worse than we thought, but they'll be fine for what their current purpose will be. I mean, worst case, we chew up some pads. It's all right. So I'm going to cut the hose off. This wheel actually still sticks. I tried spinning it with the wheel on, but it didn't go anywhere. So we'll cut the brake lines off. I'm going to oil them. Same thing on the other side because that's crusty. So hopefully this goes all right. We'll see. And then the other side, it's actually slightly better, including rotor. I think this wheel spun. Yep. See how I can spin that with my hand. So same process. We'll update you soon. Go ahead. It's coming up <laughs> first. And then the, uh, yeah. Why don't we'll you take, take the, a, uh, why don't you take a 50,000 foot and explain what we're doing? Okay. Here's what we want to do today. We're going to put the new sheet metal on the front of this car. We got to finish with the brakes. Radiator support's coming back up. Radiator, denser, all that below. Why don't we just. Moldings are coming off. Never mind. And so we can release these fenders. I got the brakes done. Had to make a line on this side. And it's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Got Let's the master clip. cylinder in. Yeah, we broke the clip. Are these staying here or? No, <laughs> these are mine. Let's see. This guy's so committed to. Oh, uh, look at that one was loose already. Maybe. This guy's so committed to getting all the moldings on this thing today. We have what? We have three hours to let's, do this. Let's do it. Okay. Put the video down. Look 
Quickly, could you tell me what's holding me? Is there time for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a piece of corn up in there or something. There's all walnuts on the top of the tray. Maybe that's corn. Oh, wow. Or is that a beehive? No, I think it's corn. Or is that a snake cackle? Definitely not a snake. Nothing's holding it. Well, get over here and like, it won't release. I don't want to scratch the door too much. You already did. Did really try to scratch it? Yeah, for sure. We'll fix oh, it. We'll fix, we'll fix it. Watch my tool. Tools there, the screwdrivers. Wait, you blew that off. Then. Papa Lou got one oh, fender off. Yeah. They had the bolt out up there. They got oh, this. Man. Someone was making a little home in there. Got to get the vacuum in there. Surprised that's not rotted out. Oh, it's a really clean car. There's markings, factory markings. Even all in here is nice and solid. It's great. You first disconnected this? Oh, he's. Why would you do that to me? That's not right. Abuse. There's walnuts on the top of the trans, too. I think it's abuse of elder, cuz. Alright, I gotta go back to what I was doing. Yeah, but I gotta just lift that up, maybe. Alright, now pull it. For a McChicken, Dad. That's a relatively new one. McChicken. No, it's not. I don't know if you got a deal on it. 2001. Oh, yeah? 2001 is the copyright. Okay, doors are open. All right, quick update. Got fenders off. This. Core support turned out to be NOS, so that's cool. Got another one there for backup. NOS getting... stands for new old stock. Thank you. These fenders are NOS, but they're flat fenders because they're not right from the factory. So we'll show you why those won't be right when they're lined up. Fogging some replacement parts so they match somewhat. New old stock hood. 7172 style. Here's the original hood. Actually, I should take those off. Bumper replacement. It's starting to rain a little. It's okay. Dog. We're moving. Moving right along. Good. Okay, you ready, cuz? And it down. Oh, the resistance is going down. Why? Actually, not that bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, waxing good. I don't think the frame horns are bent that bad. Um, let's loosen that. So that, the, the four bolts will loosen up and it's got to go just yeah. a little, but it looks pretty. It's kind of like it's got to go back a little bit. There's definitely no frame damage on this car.
We should have realized that was a freaking brand new freaking video. Can't break this. Oh, the uh, GS bag. I'm going to move that up right here. Safety net. That's sick. Oh, what happened? Now I curse, so I can't even use it. I'm gonna get the rubber fillers from the back pump. Okay, just put it on the ground under here. Like that. We get a nice weapon next time, but it's supposed to be bolder. Yeah, but if it's not raining, we don't need to put the top down. Uh, that looks great. Well, I'll come up uh, May Tuesday or Wednesday night. What night are you available? Probably all of them. And we'll just. Yeah, I'll get a nice light for the front here, and then we'll just finish up all those little doodads. Well, I'll do the headlight nozzle and stuff, so maybe Tuesday night I'll work on it, and then Wednesday night it can come up. All right. Uh, let's get the hood. Yeah, that's going to suck. Okay. A couple days later, this is where we are, or where we left off. Things are looking pretty good. Again, this is an NOS hood, NOS fenders, which you can kind of see what we're talking about, how these need to be fixed with these flat fenders. This hood will come down a little bit more. I'll show you in a second. But even so, it's still, they like a little slope. So, correct, NO, or these aren't NOS, but correct 72 hood grills, the difference between the 70 and the 72. A little bit tighter there to fit the triangle cone. Other than that, we found out that it was an NOS rad sport. So now today I gotta put all the hardware in, to put this bad boy together. So here's our parts one. These black clips are for the bezels. Headlights obviously, clean them up a little bit. And then the other thing we got to do, we got to take the grill back out, which is NOS, and install this 71, 72 style uh, hood latch. 70 is the same, just I think the handle's different. 72 NOS uh, bevels on this one, and then this one I just fogged black to kind of match. Get those installed, and then the last thing to pull the hood down, working on getting this latch free. It's a uh, original latch, it's starting to move a little bit. But it was covered in rust. There was all buildup behind it, like something was trying to make a nest in it or something. So I soaked it in the evapo rust and got it installed here and put the shroud in. So I'm going to try and at least get the headlights done today. And then we'll get the bumper on and go from there. Planning on driving it Sunday. We'll see. Fan shroud's in. Got it from my buddy Lou. Great guy. Good friend. It's got a slight crack in it, but he obviously told me about that. He's got to fix that at some point. This is technically a 71 shroud. It should have a hole here for a upper hose strap. So fortunately, we have a 71 stage one that currently has a 72 shroud. That's the only difference in them uh, that we could swap over at some point. Okay, there's still gas in it and it is, it's like red, but also clear. It doesn't look that dirty at the bottom of the tank. It literally looks like transmission fluid from back here. Let me see if I can bring in with just the phone light. I mean, is that not transmission fluid? What's going on here? There's there's gas in it. There's probably a couple gallons, so I'll just try and take some out with a transfer pump quick. Okay, gas tank's back. Still got the original sticker stamping, USS tanks or whatever it said. Uh, about to rebuild the top end, aka put some rust converter on it and undercoating. Again, just temporary for now, but it's actually really clean inside. Little dirt, all that old gas is out that I guess used to be colored back in the day. Some debris in there, but 
Can't ask for much better, at least from the eye test. So gonna get this ready to go. Blow out the fuel lines, convert the rubber hoses up front back to uh, the length of the car lines and then get everything back together. Oh, and a new sending unit, but I'll show you that before I put it back in. All right, I'm underneath the car here and just want to show you a few things. The trunk pan is really solid. I mean, this is the worst of the, the rust here. And it's just surface, flake right off, clean up. Get to that at some point. But really, really happy with really the entire car, floors wise. It's just the frame's got a little scale on it. And the other thing, to where a build sheet once was, we know this tank's been dropped because there should be a gas tank pad on the top of it, which I have one that we'll use. But you can just tell, the car is really, really solid. And then someone butt connected, butt connected the ground here, which is stupid. So I'm gonna actually take that off and then re-solder it on the new one get a proper heat shrink on it so some work to do still but moving right along so the gas gauge was grounding out and it was all the way past full and this wire back here is broken so we got to fix that do that real quick and then we'll pretty much be ready to go just got to put the bumper on bolt in the fan shroud Get the grill, the core support. I think this core support's a little bent, so we gotta knock it up a little bit somehow. Okay. Just finally cleaned out the trunk for the first time. Pretty solid. Evidence of the bad repairs in the past. It's got one hole right here. That's an easy fix. Overall, pretty solid. Found some goodies in the trunk. Bent core support braces, core support braces, some other crap. And then here's the original hood latch support. And as you can see, it got pretty mangled. Okay. You about ready to get this thing on the road? Yeah, working on it. Don't put the grill and the bumper on. Okay, goodbye. That's on the break. Swing it up. Alright, looks a little better. How's your side? I got nervous for nothing. Okay, hold the bumper. I have to get underneath there. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that was an accident. Yeah. Yeah, we 
just got to do plugs and wires. Boy, oh, yeah, it handles nice. That's beautiful. No rattles. Especially for a convertible. Speedometer work? to get gas. The fuel line is leaking pretty good, so we gotta get back. How fast is leaking? Pretty good. is definitely off because the rear gear has been changed. Bad gear, no stop. Thank you, Lord. Are you scared? No, you're driving so slow anyway. You're not driving that fast again. I don't blame you.
boys are back. Yo. There's a car right there. good no we got I think we need an engine that didn't sound good gets dicey. I have a bunch of keys for it. None of them work the trunk. That's definitely a rocket. Or something like that. Probably came off a little bit. I think all in all, not bad. The fuel leaks pretty bad. We need to bring our uh, to do board. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to do. All right, that's all for now, right? We're done with this for a little bit? Yeah, we're going to get on the 38. Okay. At least we got to drive it. Sounds okay. Runs pretty good. Runs very good. Runs very good. Especially now with that plug on. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. Cooking coming up the driveway now. But maybe one day I'll just pull a rock rock just to ease our mind. What do you think? No. We're going to put it over here too. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. And takes off. Underneath that pan. Valley pan, not so much dirt in there. A little moisture from us. That's what we have here. Peeling it back. Pick that up, Lou. <laughs> Making me look bad. Oh, look at that push rod. Holy Told shit. you it was going to be bent like oh, a shape. Wow. I have to cut that out of there to get it out of there. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut that in half to get it out of there, believe it or not. I've never seen one like that on a Buick. But what do I know?